I share as much as I am willing to share and as much as I could talk about. Can I just be honest? If you notice, like, it, it's, it's, it's even when I come on here, I'm crying. You know, I am crying. I want you to know that I am still healing. Hey, boos. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is yet another chit chat. Get ready with me. Y'all know I love these. And based on the comments and engagements I get on these videos, I know y'all love them too. So come on, let's talk, come in. Okay, so background is different. I'm in front of my patio, patio, balcony, <laughs> where all the light is coming in. The bulb to my block, box light blew out and I need to go purchase another bulb, just like I need to go purchase another bulb for my ring light. So it has truly transitioned me to my living room because I need lights. <laughs> All of my lights that I used to film are out. I'm struggling to find the replacement for my ring light, so now I just need to look for a box light. So, ugh. let's go ahead and pin my hair out the way a little bit, y'all. I'm going to go in right quick and um, prime my face. This primer is by Revlon Colorstay. It's a prime and protect um, face primer. That means it's a primer and it has SPF in it. The SPF in this one is 34. How y'all doing? Are y'all doing good? I want to say thank you again for all of the comments that I got in my last video, the congratulations, but then also the engagement. I always encourage for y'all to comment, and I love when I'm able to comment back to you guys. So um, thank you guys for your comments on my last video because it clearly showed that you guys needed that conversation. And thank you also for the congratulations. Today's video, y'all, is more so therapeutic for me. So I kind of just want to invite y'all in and I just want y'all to just talk with me, okay? I'm getting emotional already. Typically on my get ready with me is I always come with a message in the midst of me talking. And I mean, there may be a message in the midst of this, but I just kind of wanted this space for me to come and talk to y'all. Can I tell you where my head is at? I'm in a space where y'all, I'm just so thankful. Y'all, I went through something almost two years ago that <laughs> really almost took me out you know my home girl came to me the other day and she said Nini she said um we need an update and she said you have this glow and you've changed so much and so much has happened in your life we need an update Nini because we need to know how did you get there because we can see it we can feel it we can tell it how did you get there can I be honest with you guys I wasn't really ready to give you guys an update because I wasn't sure when was the right time for me to really speak. I didn't know and I kept going to God because I'm like, God, I just need strength and I need you to find my words. And if you have been following me for a long time, you know that when I don't want to talk, when I don't want to, when I don't have the words, when I'm going through, I don't speak. I don't speak because I need to kind of like feel what's actually happening and 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 I'm hurt and I have to kind of like retreat and I have to like pull back and get myself together right when I'm wounded I retreat let me just tell you though it's a beautiful process when you go and you retreat think about animals right quick when animals animals are wounded they go find a hiding space. When animals are sick, they go find a hiding space. They try them be their best self, their best to get out the middle of the road or get out, you know, whatever they, they was going through, whether it was a, an attack with another animal, whatever situation that was just posing to be unsafe. When they make it out, they go retreat because they don't need the attacks anymore they need to heal they need to rest okay i gotta i gotta put a pause on doing my makeup right quick because clearly we really gotta talk okay whenever i'm wounded i always go retreat and for me it's a beautiful space because my retreat looks like recovery in my head it's like i need to recover and i like to think guys that God does things to 
put you in isolation. He will take things away. <laughs> he will fumble up and screw things up for you. It will feel like things are just falling down and crashing down. <laughs> and I like to believe that God does that to get your attention. God does those things to you to get your attention. I feel like God had been trying to get my attention for a long time because I had been praying to him about things. But, you know, I wasn't getting the things that I was praying for and I was getting some things. But I just kept going to God and going to God and going to God. But I didn't realize that God was already here at me. He was already in my face like, hey, you keep coming to me asking me for shit. But are you listening to me? Are you looking at what's going on? And I wasn't until I was broken. Until me going through this storm, the storm kicked my ass. I really hit my lowest almost two years ago. I almost lost myself almost two years ago. I wouldn't be here today <laughs> if I'd have did what I never wanted to do almost two years ago. <laughs> so when people want me to speak, I'm still in the closet like, God, I thank you because almost two years ago, I wouldn't be where I am. Y'all had to go retreat because I was so broken. I was so lost. I was so confused. I was so hurt. I was just everything. I was so tired. I was so overwhelmed. I was just at my lowest. This time though, I felt like I had every right to be hurt. <laughs> This time I felt like I had every right to just kind of sit in my feelings and just be myself, which was hurt. I had every right to this time. And a part of me was in my head like, you need to get back up. You need to, you know, like, okay, uh, you know that, that things didn't go the way that you wanted it to go. But guess what? You need to get back up. You need to get going and you need to do this. And the other side of me, other side of me was like, to hell with you. I am broken. I am hurt. And I got to sit in it. And I got to sit in it. And sitting in it for me was really just kind of finding refuge in God because that's all I know. I'm going to be honest, y'all. That's, that's all I know. Whenever you go through stuff, I've always just kind of learned and been taught, just take it to God. Just just go ahead and pray about it. Just go ahead and just keep praying about it and just keep, just, just, just do that. And so that's all I did. So my silent season was me talking to God because I just couldn't understand, you know, why did all of this have to happen just for you to get me here? Why did you have to do all of this just for you to get me here? Now I'm here and I don't know what to do. I had to go silent because I was battling a lot with just my own self and like um, how I was seeing my problems, how I was experiencing my problems, what actually was a problem. I had so many problems going on and I just was like, can I deal with it please? I like to say when you retreat, it's one of the most beautiful spaces because I think then you just have yourself and um, you have to kind of rely on yourself to take care of yourself. And I'm gonna use the example as animals, you know, like all I keep imagining in my head, and some of you guys may understand the significance that I may not even know, but I kind of think of a, what I see is like a deer. And I think that when a deer is hurt, a deer limps across the road and they just don't stand in the middle of the forest and they're hurt. They find somewhere that they deem is safe and they go there and they just sit. And I feel like the deer cries and the deer cries because it's in pain, right? I feel like the deer sobs or goes through some sort of grief because it's in pain and the deer rests. 
and the deer may wake up and the deer may be too weak to get out and go go eat something but the deer just rests and the deer just sits and really has to examine what has happened what what happened i was walking across the road i got hit did i not go fast enough did i not run did i stand there and stop why did i stand there and stop why didn't i move why didn't i do this okay well then it hit me oh it hit me and it hurt so bad and oh my god i remember when it hit right here and it left this marking oh my god and then i had to limp and there was nobody around to help me and i had to just kind of limp and i thought that i wasn't going to make it i thought that i was going to die i just thought that i wasn't going to recover so i just had to find a space and now i'm here you know and i don't <laughs> that was me when the deer is in that space they're resting they're resting and I just imagine them thinking that the events through and they're feeling the pain and they're trying to just heal. They're trying to just heal. And eventually, the deer does heal. You know, how do we even know? Well, the body of the deer, it's a body. The body knows how to heal itself, but then there's forces in the earth that also heals you too, okay? So, so for some reason, the deer gains a little strength, and before you know it, the deer may not get up and go run across the road again. Nah, that look a little too scary. <laughs> but the deer knows what he needs. I may need some food and water. I know where to go for that. Then I'm going to go back, and I need to just kind of heal. Can I show, tell you that that was just me? <laughs> The process that the deer had to go through was just me. Boom! Something hits me. Life, everything goddamn hit me. And I'm like, whoa. Whoa, this hurts so bad. And oh my God, this hurts so bad. And now I'm flipping in the goddamn air. And oh my God, I land on my shoulder. And Lord, this hurts so bad. And I done hit the back of my head and I'm bleeding out. God, who's around to help me? Oh my God. I'm just about to die because I can't take it. I can't take it. I can't take it. But okay, you've spared me. I ain't dead. So let me just go ahead and sit. And when I go sit, now I gotta go relive. What the just happened and oh my god, this hurts so bad. And I don't know what to do. And I'm just there. I'm just there. And I don't know how the deer, the deer just heals himself. I told you the body just repairs itself. Well, this is me. In my isolation, my body is just trying to get myself together. And it's the workings of my mind and the workings of my heart and the workings of my inner voice. And I'm just trying to get those pieces together to help pull me straight. And no, I'm not ready to go out there and run, right? I'm not ready to go out there and be me again. I'm not ready to go out there and talk but I know I need a little nourishment so let's see how do I nourish myself you know do I go pray where do I find this nourishment from do I talk to my friends do I do whatever okay that's filling me up now I got to go back and I got to sit and I got to heal and I got to rest and a lot of that looks different for everybody but for me healing and resting just look like what is this all trying to tell you what's actually happening and I learned so much from just that accident. And it was a lot of accidents. And I'm just... <sighs> Healing and resting just really looked like how do I determine what my own value looks like? And how do I take that back from others? And how do I grow and become the girl that I want? And the thing and get the things that I want and live the happy that I want without the shit that I was doing. Because that wasn't it. My only power source was removing myself from the people, places, and things that was keeping me stuck, that was draining my energy, where I wasn't moving, where I didn't have no room for, there was no space for me to be here. I had to get out of that. I get emotional when I come and I talk and I tell you guys about where I am and what I got going on. It's because God has really brought me a mighty long way. I was just so uncertain of how to put all of these things into words because the the reality is is that my season that what, what, you, what you see now it was brought on by something that 
came from an event that was actually taking me out. I fought so hard. And um, as I look around, it's like my fighting really paid off. You know? When I tell you my fighting really paid off, it paid off. There's this song and it says, God is doing a great work. He's doing a great work. He's doing a great work in me. God is doing a great work. I can't even sing it. He's doing a great work. I can't sing it. He's doing a great work in me. God is doing a great work. He's doing a great work. He's doing a great work in me. That song is by Brian Courtney. And it's called A Great Work. And, um... Y'all, that song has been like the theme of the season right now. Um, We're going to try to get through this video, guys. But again, I already set the stage. This is for me. So can we just kind of sit? And for me, I, I got to cry my feelings. I got to talk it out. I got to. So, so, so. We, 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 we going to. We getting through. When I tell you that's the theme of my life right now, God is doing a great work. As I look back over where I've come from just in these last two years, and that's because that's the most recent thing that just kind of almost took me out, you know, and, and that's that's what really brought about this transformation you see here. I just kind of look back and I say God is just doing a great work. But I had to fight for this. I had to really fight for this and what do I mean? I had to really see favor over my own life. I really had to believe that the things that I was going through wasn't meant to take me out. Those things were not meant to do that and God didn't set these things up for them to break me. I wouldn't have lent that to you. The things that you are going through are not meant to break you. They ain't meant to take you out. It ain't meant to shut you up for failure. And I had a desire over my life, you know. I had a, I have a desire to live and a desire to be happy and a desire to just walk in the purpose that I'm meant to be here. I have a desire for that. And because I had the desire, I knew like, oh no, girl, these things that you are going through, they ain't meant to break you. They meant to get your attention. And when I started looking at it that way, I really had to just kind of open my eyes. I had to open my eyes and really see what God was doing and what was happening in my life. And that caused me to kind of slow down and really sit and really just kind of see the desire I had for myself and what I wanted for myself. And I had to really see like, how do you stop trying to get other people to fulfill those things and you fulfill them? How do you see your own strength? How do you see your own beauty? How do you see your own power? How do you see your own worth? How do you, what do you see for yourself? You know, like, what are you doing that's detrimental? What do you need to stop? What is, what, what, what is, what, what's trying to get your attention right now? Guys, I really had to just kind of sit, but you know, it calls for me to get wounded. I'm really trying to work on this eye and this wet. Lord have mercy. God did something in my life where God really, really, really needed my attention, guys. And that's because truly I was going nowhere fast. Like, I was doing a lot of things to myself that was damaging to myself. So here I am praying, asking God for things, but my life is not even reflective of the things that I'm asking for. And what I have in my life right now is not even meant to be in my life because the things that I'm asking for don't fit or don't align with the things that's in my life right now. And that means people, but that means behaviors, that means mindsets, that means that however I was living my life and what was being reflected was not what was meant to be reflected. Reflected. And when I had to really just kind of sit down and isolate myself, guys, I really just kind of had to talk to God and help ask God to help me find me, you know. And and it was it was a conversation that I had to even have with myself. Like, Miss Girl, we gotta we really gotta pour into who you are and we really gotta really nurture that some more because baby girl you've done a good job at nurturing others but you haven't done so good at nurturing yourself.
Oh, that's so big. I did a great job of nurturing, taking care of, and doing things for others, but I was not doing as good of a job for myself. I mean, not even close. <sighs> I really just kind of had to build my own confidence back in myself. And I, I remember I just had to go, and, and, and I, I won't speak it as if like this is something I did and I'm not doing anymore. These are things that I'm doing now. Like my attention just really just shifted from others and I put it onto me. I really did. Like that was my biggest issue. I was giving and doing so much for other people's happiness and it just wasn't enough for me. I was giving myself, it was kind of like, you know, if we had two pieces of bread, I was going to make sure that I gave one whole piece to somebody else and then I'm going to split the half of the second piece and I'm going to get that to another person. And then for me, uh, I don't really need this whole half. Let me cut a little bit out of the corner for me and then the rest of this I can give to somebody else because I know what this can do. And, and I was doing a lot of that. I was not giving as much to myself and I was wondering why all these things I'm praying for, they ain't showing up in my life right now they, they and, and, and the things that I'm going through I'm not deserving of these things right now you know like come on Lord what, what's really happening but I, I, I was not listening and it took for me to get wounded to actually go and sit and listen listen to myself listen to what my body listen to you know my, 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 my mind listen to my heart listen to God it took for me to get wounded to do that and I don't know if any of you guys have been there before or, you know, going through that. Like, sometimes it takes for things to just really just fall apart to really get our attention. And um, that's what it was for me. Things really fell apart. But I, I just didn't want to speak, guys, because it was like... I, I, I really had to just process my own emotions and thoughts and feelings and I really just kind of had to stay focused on what was working and what was working for me was to stop talking about it. What was working for me was to just get focused and feel what was to be present. What was working for me was just turning my attention and focusing only on me and focusing only on what I want and focusing only on the direction and if I want to talk I mean when it's time to talk about it, it's time to talk about it. But I really wasn't prioritizing what I needed to talk about and what I needed to, you know, how I needed to show up for others because it was just the space of me showing up for me. And honestly, guys, I'm still in that space where I am just showing up for me. So I share as much as I am willing to share and as much as I could talk about. Can I just be honest? If you notice, like, it, it's, it's, it's even when I come on here, I'm crying. You know, I am crying. I want you to know that I am still healing. I am still pushing through. I am still trying to work through. I, I, I want you to see that because this is what that looks like. I'm only able to come and talk about the things that I'm able and ready to talk about. The things that I'm able to form my words and, 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 and say. I'm, I'm only able to do that. And I'm working in the path because, again, my focus is not really to pour into others. My focus is to pour into Nathisha. And Nathisha is, 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 is healing. Nathisha is still processing. Nathisha is still feeling. Nathisha is still trying to figure her way out. But I'm going to tell you something. Nathisha is thankful. And one thing about it, Nathisha is seeing the work of the Lord. Do you hear me? I am not the Nathisha that almost, you know, left, left two years ago. I'm, I'm not that. I'm nowhere even near that. Let me tell you something. So I know this is a very beautiful eye look. Can I tell you the palette I'm coming out of? My transition color and my lid color which is this pink color right here and this other dark purple came from this palette. This is from Ruby Kisses. I'm sorry, this is Nika K and it's called the Sugar Com Sugar Plum Flat Palette. And then I'm coming out uh Jackie Ina's Anastasia Beverly Hills Pills Palette. And there's this one pur purple in here called Bywig. And that's that purple you just seen me add right here. Um, this is a beautiful 
palette you know you need some colors to help make these colors pop but just the base and the transition looks really great what I'm saying is that I'm still going through a process of where I'm trying to formulate my words where I'm trying to really kind of like give you some of what I got but my attention is give Natisha what she got because Natisha hasn't even experienced this in a long time, you know? And I'm so naturally always giving, 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 and telling, but I need to experience and feel what the heck is happening. So truly, it, it, it's why I'm silent because it's like, you know, I'm still going through. I'm still, I'm still getting through this. And I can only give you what I'm able to formulate. And the only things that I'm able to formulate right now is God is good. <laughs> and thank you, Jesus. And, and when I mean that is because guys, like, I was low. I didn't see my own value, you know? I didn't see my own value. I didn't see my own worth. I didn't even see what was the point of me still being here. I saw my life as just kind of like always going through something. I saw my life as kind of like one minute I'm happy and then damn, next minute it's like I'm not so happy and things aren't going so good. My life just didn't seem like it had meaning after God set me down. It, it didn't feel like that. And I had to work and fight so hard just to regain that feeling, just to regain that sense of purpose. And it really just kind of took for me to just shifting my attention on me. The only way was that I had to shift my attention on me and I had to figure out what it was I needed for myself. And that's all I can really tell you. You know, in order to be in a season where you are seeing plentiful, right? And, and when you are actually feeling better and doing better, you got to really figure out what is it you need for yourself. And what I needed was my peace back. What I needed was my drive back. What I needed was my confidence back. What I needed was my self-love back. What, what, I, what I needed to really believe in me like I know I know how to. And like I, I feel like I know how to. And what I've done before, maybe I've kind of been driven away from that. But I needed to even be better on, on, a, on a better scale because I'm, I'm wiser and I'm older and I want better. I just needed me to do a lot for my myself so it just shifted my focus where I had to figure out what I need so my words that I could give to you is I need you to figure out what you need <laughs> I can't hand walk you through this because um I'm holding my own hand but truly what I needed was me to give all of my energy that I was giving and pouring into other things, I needed to pour that into Natisha. So Natisha needs to speak life into her. Natisha needs to believe in her just as much as she believes in others and what they can do and what they got going on. Natisha has to, you know, figure out what she wants for her life and what direction Natisha wants to go into. And Natisha has to really heal some of these things that Natisha thought she wasn't healing. You got to go and you got to get you some help, child. <gasps> you got to go. You you gotta go and, and get yourself some support, y'all. I just I, I I had to figure out what I needed. I don't. I, I just kind of felt like I needed to treat myself better, and that looked like so many things. I needed to speak up. I needed to stop being so quiet. I needed to really recognize who was around me and what I needed. And I had to value the things that I like to do. And, you know, I don't have to always just do what people want to do. I have to, I can also do what Natisha wants to do. And whether she do it with somebody or she do it by herself, that's okay because Natisha is enjoying herself. I had to just like me. I, I, I don't want to say I liked me. I had to love me, you know, and, 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 it looked like me just kind of getting focused, guys. Like, the things that really didn't matter. So, yeah, I love to come online and I love to, you know, give a good word. And I love to be of support to others, right? But what about me? What about me? And I've really had to figure that out. And I'm going to tell you, this season has really just been me being selfish. You know, really just 
pouring into Nadisha. But I'm gonna tell you something. In the midst of being selfish, though, like I still give and I still give and I still give to others, but it's a limit to that. You know, I I, I had to find my own balance and I had to find what works for me and, and and without feeling drained and and who's deserving of that. And so so even though yes i was making things about myself right i also wanted to be authentic and show up for others but not as much where it's just taking too much attention off of me so it, it it looks like you you see me pose on instagram and i'm taking my pictures i've taken time to invest into my outer self how i show up on the outside because i've done so much work on the inside I've done so much work on the inside, but again, it was also what does Natisha need and what does Natisha want? want? And, and, and and honestly, I had to start living in the things that I was praying for. The way that you envision yourself, you have to start living like what you envision. And for and and, and for me, it's like I know what I want to look like. I know what I want to feel like. I know how I want to think. I know how I want to represent myself. I just had to start being about that. So when my homegirl say, Nee, you got so much happening and we see this glow and we see it like we need some of that. Can you tell us? Like, can you can you can you tell us what you're doing? Can you give us an update? Because Nene, you have come so far and th this is the update. This is where I am. You know, I'm in a season of just pouring into me. I'm in a season of really just loving and embodying what Natisha wants for Natisha. I had to figure that out. And I'm saying that to you because I need you to figure that out. You know, God really put me in a period of isolation because he needed me to heal. He needed me to sit down and listen and to rest. And, and he really had to get my attention and my God my god so i extend that to you if you feel like life is just chaotic and you feel like you have no grips you know and we going to god and we don't hear nothing and maybe god is talking to you and you're not listening to him but i like to say chaos brings transformation and you got to really realize and look at things like that when things get chaotic it really is because things are transforming for you and what's that song live through it Grow through it, get through it. You can make it if you just pray through it. Don't let the end. Dun 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 dun. Live through it. Two. I'm gonna say some songs really, really minister to you. And there are so many songs that has ministered to me through this entire season that I've been in. I mean, I look at the, I, I pay attention to the things that I watch, the things that I, I, I look at, uh, because, the, and I'm very intentional about that because the, I, I need ministering and I need pouring into and I need reminders. And those things help me to be my greater good. And I encourage that for you. Whatever you need, I need you to feed yourself with those things. I had to tell myself, like, Nathisha, you know, these things that you are going through, they are they are not meant to break you. That took a change in perspective, pers perspective pers pers change in perception, perspective, I'm sorry. But I, I really had to tell myself, and I lend that message to you, like, whatever you are going through, it's not meant to break you. It's not. But some of these things are meant to grab your attention, especially if it hurts. You know, your attention, you, your attention is trying to be directed. God is trying to get you to see something. Okay? If you don't think it's God, your attention is being pulled. And I need you to figure and really see why is your attention being pulled. I, I don't know. I just don't believe that we're meant to live a life of just heartache and misery and upset and all that. I just don't think that. You know, I don't really know the Bible like that. But I look at some of the stories in the Bible and I see that these people really went through things, right? And they stayed steadfast and all of those things. And a lot of these people, you know, didn't complain. They just kind of saw what it was and just believed that there was greater things coming and and that 
was what I had to do for myself. I had to believe that there were greater things coming. I had to believe that there was purpose in my life. I had to believe that there was purpose in the process, purpose in the pain. And I'm still believing that. You know, like I'm still believing all of the things that I may have went through, all of the the the, 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 the heartache and all that stuff. It was purpose and all of that. You know, I still believe that. And I just encourage you to believe that there's purpose. But you got to sit down, you know. You got to sit down and you really got to determine what those things are and what do you need. Let me tell you something. Two years ago, when my life just kind of came crashing down, when things just, when, when it, and it, it I, I, a breakup happened for me. You know, I was ending relationships with my biological family. Two years ago, things was just happening so goddamn much. So many things was happening. And, um... I remember what I would do because I could not put my words. I couldn't. Ex I couldn't. I couldn't express. This is Natisha when she went into isolation. Natisha couldn't even couldn't even find the words to even express what was happening and what was going on. I mean, I mean that that's what I mean when I tell you I was on mute. I was on mute. I couldn't even find the words to even describe or to be angry or to even express what I was feeling and what was happening. So what I had to do was write the words. I couldn't formulate my lips together. My mind and my thoughts was racing and moving too fast that I could not even articulate my thoughts at the time. So what I needed was extra silence because even me talking is ruining this process. So you know what I did? I started writing and I wrote in my journal and I wrote the entire year, the ending of 2021, and I started writing and I kept writing in 2022. And I would just write my feelings, but I would write letters to God and just really talk to him about what was happening. But in addition to me writing letters to God, I had to write letters to myself because I like to tell people we have this inner voice that guides us and that leads us and it's us. And I say this inner voice is always looking for your greater good. It's always working on your greater good. But you have to really see how that inner voice speaks to you because sometimes we have a couple inner voices that that's the really harsh and critical and mean one that tells you that you just never enough. You know, that's based off your trauma. The harsh and critical mean one that just kind of puts you down and for some wicked ass reason that being put down just makes you feel so good we have that voice then we have that voice that's just kind of like sad you know and just kind of want to feel in despair just kind of want to feel bad for yourself you know you have that voice but then I like to think that we are all equipped with this voice in us that really just kind of tells us what we need to know and, and, and it's not telling us because, you know, we're trying, trying to be harsh on ourselves, but it's just telling us because it's the right thing and it's ultimately telling us what we need, right? But we don't always tap into that voice, but I started tapping into that voice and I started writing. I needed to talk to me, but I needed to talk to me in ways where you were, you were, you were, you were patient with me. You know, you were encouraging to me. You pulled my coattail when you needed to pull my coattail. You know, I started tapping into that voice and I started writing. I was so weak. I, I was so broken. I was so wounded. I had to write. And I'm going to tell you something. Something had told me, go read your journal entries. And I was like, okay. And I go back and I go. And at one point, y'all, like I, 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 I periodically would read my writing, but I wouldn't read it all because when I read that writing, it really just kind of hurt me. Like it was just hurt. It was painful because it just took me back to I remember what it was like going through that moment. And I was so vivid in my writing and I expressed myself so well that it was just like hurt. It, it hurt to even sometimes read it. So I really wouldn't delve in it. But this is the space of growth that I was in. I went back and I actually read that writing and I read it and I was like, whoa. And just to sum up what I'm about to say, even reading that writing, I was like, I'm nowhere near what I was writing on this paper. I don't feel those feelings anymore. I don't feel like that anymore. I'm nowhere near. I had noticed though that I had no writings for 2023. And I said, 
you just stop writing? Why you why you stop writing? Like, what made you stop writing? And as I sat and I reflected, I looked at what I was writing and I was talking to God and I was talking to myself and I was talking to God. I didn't have any writings for 2023 because my life looked like I was talking to God. My life looked like in 2023, I had the words to formulate what I was going through. <laughs> In 2023, I was feeling better, but it took me some time to heal. And I'm still healing. It took me some time to rest. This is real. And so I'm just telling you that you're getting words and you're getting just as much from me because I'm finally able to find my voice and my life is looking like that because I'm finally up and I don't just go out to get water and eat. No, I go out and I commune a little bit and I show face and I'm stepping into because I'm feeling better, right? But I ain't all that great, but God is doing a great work in me. My writings don't reflect where I used to be. But at that time in my life, writing was all I could do. At that time in my life, that was the only thing that I had that could express what was happening. It was writing. I don't write to God anymore. I, I go pray to God. I go get into God's house and I talk to him and I pray to him. I got a prayer closet and I sit and I talk to God. You know, like I've found my voice and I'm finding my words, you know? So if you're not where I am and you want to get where I'm where I've gotten or where I am, I'm just gonna lend you some things that, that works for have worked for me. And if you can't formulate it, go write it. Go write it. Try it out. But if you come far and you used to write, go read them writings. Go read them poems. Go read whatever you had to do. Go, go visit where you took that first note and how it resonate. And just kind of look back and see, are you there? Are you there? Have you been renewed? Have you been transformed? And not renewed as if to the end point, you no longer wear where you used to be. The renewal has happened. Child. Y'all know me, I get up here and I get to preaching. I'm saying this to tell you that Natisha was wounded pretty bad. And Natisha had to seek refuge because I was wounded pretty bad. And all of the fruits that you see producing around me is because in that refuge, I had to figure out what I needed for myself. In that refuge, I had to heal. And I'm still healing. It's still a process, but I've really truly had to, I really had to see how the things that was happening around me wasn't meant to take me out. And I had to define the favor over my life that, you know, I felt that God was putting over my life and God was doing. And I, 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 I had to really just kind of shift my focus to Natisha. And that was just super important for my own healing. You know, I, I was wounded really, really bad. And um, didn't know how to deal with that wound. But I had to isolate. And I had to figure out what I need. Because I spent time just kind of figuring out what I need. And because I spent time at really changing my mindset set. And seeing that there's purpose and favor over my life. And seeing that I am worth just as much as I believe that I'm worth. And I need you to understand that you are worth just as much as you believe you are worth. And I... I had to learn that I believe that I'm worth more than what I'm embodying and what I'm showing up and acting as and what I'm allowing into my life. I'm worth more than that and I need to live like that and I need to show that and I need to think like that and I need to operate like that. But listen, that ain't easy. There's things I had to do for myself. Let me tell you something, child. I am part of the gang where a relationship drove me to therapy drove me to really really focus on my mental health a relationship i like to believe when other people and things drive you to your weaker points to your lower points and you actually got to go seek help for that oh yeah it's a wake-up call 
it's, it's definitely a wake up call. I'm gonna tell you on my lips right quick. This is from Southern Butte. I don't think this company is around anymore. Um, this was from a YouTuber. Her name was Charlene Patrice. She had a company named Southern Butte, but I don't think it's around anymore. So I just use like a dark, uh, a, a dark purple lip liner. The pink on my lips is actually MAC, but this is from um, Viva Glam Taraji P. Henson. It's a beautiful color. It's like this. It keep getting on my lips, but it's like this pink. Per I don't know if it's still around, but I had to get it because I like Taraji. Um, and then I just kind of filled in that liner with Cybro on the outside. Now what I'm going to do is do something different because I feel like the eyes are popping and they're matte, but I really want to make this look pop, right? So this is a glass lip gloss by Juvia's Place and it's called So Glazed, I think. Now it's so funny because this is like an iridescent type of lip gloss. It has shimmers of like pink and purple, but I'm going to put it on and we gonna see together how how this shows up on the lip y'all because I never really liked this I never really liked this color at all I always would play in it but I just never liked it and I think because I never had the right pairing so let's just see what it looks like I want you and I actually kind of want to zoom in a little bit so y'all could kind of see so here we go oh wow wow it really is a topper look do you see how it just made that pink like really glossy, glassy? Oh wow, okay look. Oh, whoa, whoa, what's happening here? Wow. A part of me is like, should I put it over the whole lip or? Like, should I put it over the whole lip or just the inner? A part of me is like, girl, make the whole lip glossy. Okay, let's see. Wow. I don't know if I like it. It's only because it's different. I don't like it only because it's different. I would never wear anything like this. Wow. Okay. Wow. What y'all thinking about the lip? This is crazy. So look, it looks like this. Wow, this is called So Glaze. It's like an iridescent like topper. What y'all thinking? I don't really like it because I don't really wear nothing like this. But it's beautiful. It's just making me uncomfortable. So I don't want to talk down. I just would never wear nothing like this. Whoa. Okay, I tried to turn my lightness down and bring my color back in, but I don't know. This is different. I'm going to try my best to keep this this lip on for the day because normally whenever I'm in uncomfortable lips, look, lips, I kind of take them off and go to something more nude. But I'm going to try my best to just kind of step out the box, you know, and just try it, you know, just see how it's going. I, it, it looks okay. I don't think it's bad, but again, I'm just uncomfortable because I don't wear no glossy purple lips, like, okay, but I wanted something to match with the eye look. I think the eye look is really pretty. I think it's cute. Which y'all, y'all feeling it? I like it. Anyways, this was an emotional chit chat. Get ready with me. But like I said, I just wanted to come talk to you, you know, and sometimes when I come talk to people, I don't have all of the best advice. I can't just steer you in the right direction. Like sometimes that's what it looks like when Nathisha just wants to talk. When Nathisha wants to talk, Nathisha just kind of wants to be emotional and just feel what she's feeling, you know, and just kind of tell you where I was. And I may not just take what you could get from what I'm talking. That's all I want to say. So whatever you could take from this, I hope that you could take it. But I wasn't intentionally coming to pour into you today. I needed to just for you to sit and listen to me. And if you got something, I'm so happy. You know, but I thank y'all so much. And the space that I'm in is that I am really just trying to pour into me. And really just love on me and really root for myself and just get my mind right. And Natisha is just in a whole transformative state because I needed to be. But I'm still healing. You know, I'm still resting. The things that I'm doing is I'm doing them at my pace at God's speed, I like to say. But I'm still resting. And I deserve to, you know, because... I went through a lot, I have gone through a lot, but those things do not 
cloud all of what I see. I love the progress, but I'm going to tell you, it's because I had to fight to be here. And my only saving grace, where I have always known that I could rest there, is when I go see God. Um, and I always can just send that to you because it's not been my saving grace. So I encourage you, go see God. You know, go rest. I hope that my analogy of the deer being hurt, that helped you out. Because I know some people need visuals. And, and, and that's just the way that I, I can relate my problem to you and how I've been managing. I have been resting and healing. You know, but I ain't as broke as I used to be. I'm just not there, and you can see that around. And I hope that you know that because I feel that. But I'm still taking this one day at a time, and I can only give you what I'm able to articulate and formulate. So thank you guys for listening. Listening. I hope that this was good. I always appreciate you guys' engagement. Comment down below. Just tell me what what. What did you hear? What did you receive? What stood out for you? What's resonating? If you got something that you need to pour into me, pour it into me. Pour it into me. Okay. I love you, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.